What's up guys? Welcome to the Eco Technify channel. Tonight we are in the Eco Technify kitchen and I'm going to show you how I make my own sauerkraut. So this time the sauerkraut recipe involves purple cabbage, we have red shishito peppers, bought those from my friend Tom that you saw in the last video, and uh, green cabbage as well, and that's about it. So let's get started here. I'm already in progress with this batch, so I'll catch you up on what we're doing. I already cut up a green cabbage and I put it in my crock, which is right here. I've started on the purple cabbage and I'm also mixing in the, uh, the red shishito peppers. So what you do is you start chopping it up, whatever you're putting in there, and when you've got about enough to fill a good fistful or a couple fistfuls, you put it in your crock, and then after that, you put one of these in your hands, a bottle of some kind or some device that you can crush things with, and you smash it down in your crock like so. And between each session of doing this, you want to take some candy and pickling salt and sprinkle just a little bit, uh, about a, a pinch's worth, a good, a good pinch, and you sprinkle it on the layer uh, that you just put in there and smash down. And it doesn't really matter the order that you do that in. You can put some salt in, chop up your ingredients, throw them in there, crush them, or you can put your salt in after you crush it. It doesn't really matter. As long as you salt and crush with each round of putting everything in there. So let's uh, show you exactly how this is done. Okay, so I've been chopping up the peppers, like so. I've got about a fistful of peppers right here. Throw them into your crock. Take your bottle. Salt. Just a light sprinkle, that's all you need. And that's it. And then you keep on chopping, keep on salting, keep on crushing. My bottle of choice for this session of sauerkraut is a bottle of Black Dolphin Imperial Stout brewed by Marshall Brewing Company in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's quite nice. It makes a good crushing bottle, but before you'd use it for crushing, you need to empty the contents into your stomach, which is quite an enjoyable process in itself. Always practice proper knife safety. You'll notice I'm angling my fingernails downward toward the cutting board so that if my knife were to stray a little too close to my fingers, it would just glance off the fingernails like so or not even touch it would it would it allows the 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 back of the blade uh, to touch my knuckles or my fingernails before the cutting edge would touch so exercise proper knife safety and you'll be happy you did it result in far fewer accidents and nobody wants to cut their fingers and add blood to the the mix of their sauerkraut There's no hard and fast rule for how finely you need to chop. It will all ferment just fine. So 
so the crock I'm using is pretty big. It's a one gallon size, and uh, I already put one small cabbage, small green cabbage into the crock, and then a, a pretty good sized purple cabbage along with the shishito peppers, and it's only about half full. So I'm going to use my last green cabbage here to fill the rest of it up. So this will give me a chance to show you how you want to cut your cabbage up because you don't just want to cut everything up. You want to get rid of all of this, the, uh, the inside of the cabbage. This part of the cabbage is not going to ferment very well. So it's, it's fine to have some of, some of the, the veins of the, of the cabbage leaves in there, but you want to just really cut out the main, the main central core. So you want to put it in at an angle and not be cutting toward your fingers. This is where the small knife really excels over the large knife. You get in there, you have a lot more control. Think about kind of cutting a circular cone out of the base of your cabbage. There we go. The base of the cabbage, the interior part of it's pretty much just all white. So we're going to cut just a little bit more out of the interior of the cabbage and then we'll have what we want. And you don't have to wash the outside of your cabbage. You just take off a few of the exterior leaves until you don't see any more dirt on your cabbage. It's just the way the cabbages grow in the field. The interior leaves aren't going to have any anything dangerous on them. And they're going to be nice and pristine and not damaged by handling and things like that. Okay, so the crock is about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way full. The remains are going in the compost, of course. So at this point, what I like to do is take a paper towel and wipe the inside of the crock of any cabbage, debris, anything that might have accumulated on the edge in the past, I've had things remain on the sides when I filled it up with water, and anything that remains on the sides that could float up to the top of the water when you're filling it up will cause mold, and you will have to scrape a layer of mold off the top of your water every so often. So, now we are at the point when we want to fill our crock up with water. I stopped filling up the crock with water once things started rising with the level of the water. That means you've got everything saturated with water. And so now, what I'm doing is I'm going to put these crock weights made by Ohio Stoneware. Same thing with my crock is made there, and the lid to the crock is made there as well. So if you want things, if you want stuff like this to do your fermenting with, you can look them up. They have a lot of good, uh, a lot of good stoneware made in the USA. Very high quality. You will pay a bit of a premium on it, but it is well worth the cost, in my opinion. So, this 
is what it looks like when you weigh it down. You want as much, you want, you really want everything underwater. And anything that comes to the top here, you want to skim off because like I said earlier, anything on the top of the water is going to mold. There. Now we don't have anything floating on the surface of the water, so that will minimize mold issues. We may still get a little bit of mold on here because nobody's perfect, but that's not a serious problem in terms of the food safety or quality of your sauerkraut. Uh, it will cause an odor if you have any mold on the top, but if you clean it out every couple of days, skimming it off with your hands or placing a sturdy paper towel on the top of it and lifting it off, it will take the mold out. Uh, so just check on it every couple days, see how it's doing. It's a biological process, so it's not one of those cut and dry things like a computer where you can just put something in and it either works or it doesn't. This is the process and you just want to keep an eye on it, see how it's going. So the last thing you do is you just put your lid on. My stoneware lid. Set that on there. There you go. That's a batch of sauerkraut. Okay, so you've got your ingredients cut up. You mashed them and salted them with your pickling salt in your crock or whatever container you have. And you've got them all in there. Uh, so what's it going to take to get actual sauerkraut out of it? Well, you can wait one to two weeks and you'll have what they generally call pickled cabbage, which isn't quite sauerkraut, but it is still good and healthy for you. It's, a, it's still probiotic. You still got that fermentation process going. The bacteria uh, eating the cabbage juices or whatever else you have in there um, and creating uh, a very probiotic healthy product for you. But if you want to get actual sauerkraut, what I found is the minimum fermentation time is about four weeks. I fermented sauerkraut batches anywhere from four weeks all the way up to eight or nine weeks. And really, once you pass that four week mark, it starts getting that characteristic sauerkraut flavor that I really love. So I ferment minimum six weeks because I like that stronger sauerkraut flavor. If you get past six weeks up to eight or nine weeks, you can uh, generally start counting on that flavor becoming quite intense. Uh, sometimes you'll even actually get carbonation building up uh, with the fermentation process going quite far. So it really depends on your taste. Some people really like the strong fermentation. They want that kind of spicy carbonated bite of strong, strong sauerkraut. But if you just want what you expect from uh, sauerkraut that you would buy from the store. Six weeks is about that, uh, that window that you want to shoot for. I'll just show you a bit of some from my previous batch. I made this about five or six months ago, fermented for about six or seven weeks, and then what I did is I took it out of my crock and I put it in these mason jars and then put it in the refrigerator. So that's what you want to do if you, if you get your sauerkraut to a point in the fermentation process where you like the taste, jar it up and put it in the fridge and that drastically slows down the fermentation process. This batch has been in my refrigerator for about four or five months. So the fermentation process has continued a little bit and this is starting to get a little bit spicy. It has some carbonation in it, but it's still good. You're not in any danger of food poisoning yourself from this stuff. Fermentation is a uh, a process that people have been doing to their food for thousands of years, probably since the beginning, really indigenous food cultures. Almost every indigenous culture in the world actually has a fermentation process somewhere in their diet. South Koreans who eat their traditional diet, they, they almost don't go a meal without eating a fermented product, uh, primarily kimchi. If you want to make it more like kimchi, what you can do is add radishes into your sauerkraut and hot peppers. Put the stuff in your fridge when you're done and enjoy your sauerkraut. Now one quick note about the containers that you use. I used a crock because that's what I have and I like, I like making large batches of sauerkraut. Uh, I don't want to make tiny little batches because uh, I usually end up sharing my batches of sauerkraut with other people since so few people make their own and so few people have ever tried homemade sauerkraut and how much better it is uh, than store-bought. So I make it in large batches, but you don't have to. You can use a mason jar like this from the beginning. Um, you just put your ingredients in one of these, in a pint jar even. The only difference in the process is that during the fermentation time, you need to burp your jars because the fermentation process produces 
carbon dioxide and that will build up in your jars and if you seal your jar tight and leave it sealed long enough it will burst your jar and you'll have a big mess in your hands so if you want to use a mason jar just burp it or if you don't want to have to monitor and burp it you can put something like saran wrap or uh, some other object on top of it the just the crucial thing the most important thing about the that this whole thing is you've got to keep everything you're fermenting under the water like I said anything above is going to mold so as long as it's underwater, it doesn't, you don't have to use fancy weights like those ones that I got. I've made two large batches at once and I only have one set of weights. So what I've done with my other crock is I've actually filled a gallon bag of water and set that on top of my cabbage. But you can do it in just about any container, uh, any, anything you want to use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and go out and make your own sauerkraut and tell me what, what it was like. See ya.